you better be pretty fluent in money to afford the SQ8 or RSQ8. I've already done a video on the lower trim level called Costly Car Art, where I detailed interior exterior and more things about this. So watch that video. However, you, you want more. You want more power, you want more prestige, and you want a coupe SUV. That's what this is. And it ups the ante, specifically on the interior space. Look at the door panels. Alcantara on the doors, you have red, red leather here. You have carbon fiber inlays. It is, this car as a whole, I will say this, the most positive part, the, the fit and finish, the solidness, the build quality of this is one of the reasons why you're paying so much money. And you can tell right on the inside, and I talked about this in my last couple Tesla videos and people get all bent out of shape. Well, you know, they're doing things better, they're simplifying. Yeah, of course. But if you want to feel what something feels like when there's nothing buzzing or creaking, there's no reverberations, or it's, this is not an echo chamber, it's so well put together that I appreciate that. And there's some things that I don't appreciate about it, so I'm gonna go right into that. So when you're trying to make a coupe SUV, there's so many compromises. You lose some visibility. You go to this frameless design around the door glass. And while it looks cool, again, you're reducing the visibility and then you're creating this razor blade like door edge on the back half of the shell, which I've caught myself on a couple times. The other part is in trying to seek this sports car interior, they've reduced the usability in the front half of the car, which is the worst part about this. The door panels don't hold a lot. And when you do fit something in there, you lose it. You gotta go digging in there like a gold miner to find out what you put in there. The center stack area, They've decluttered it by going to all touchscreen. But the armrest, as comfortable as it is, when you open it up, there's absolutely no space in there for anything. All I could fit is a phone and maybe like my lip balm or lip, lip gloss that I use when I go to the clubs. It's, it's mind blowing to me that in a car like this, they, they didn't prioritize most of the functionality that you want in this. Same thing with the glove box. I couldn't even fit a small camera in there that I use. I mean, it's so frustrating on that point. But they make up for it, of course, in the back. You have the hatch. There's a ton of cargo capacity. The back seat room is really good. But it's just like, you know, if I want a sports car, I'm going to buy a sports car if I want all those compromises. I don't expect that here. And that's something you're going to have to get in and decide if you can deal with that. I will talk about the Bang & Olufsen 3D audio because this is the upgraded higher-end version. It, it performs really well. It sounds good, but I'm going to talk about that in the final thoughts. But a lot of the things that carry over here in the negative parts of this car are the center stack area. Two touch screens, they look horrible. They look absolutely disgusting. I'm driving this in winter, which I'm assuming most people would. There's salt spray, it looks like snot rockets on everything. There's smudges, the, the black plastic on the center by the shifter has got food embedded in the creases. It's just a horrible, disgusting choice and an otherwise very beautiful, interesting interior space. But, you know, I think the main thing you want to know is you get the S seats, you get all the tarted up things that you want with the S, S cars or S line, the steering wheel's different and there's other subtleties about it. But I think the main thing is you just got to get in here and decide if you're going to like it. But let's head in the shop and just briefly talk about some of the changes to the SQ8. Underneath the Audi SQ8, this is the hopped up version of the regular Q8. And we've covered some of this surprisingly in the Porsche Cayenne video and the original Q8. That is because this is on VW Audi Group's MLB architecture, which is shared between the Q7, the Bentley Bentayga, the Lamborghini Urus, and of course the Cayenne. And that would explain its astronomical price tag of around $108,000 as tested. So you want to know with the SQ8 you're getting more, and of course you are. Standard, you get a twin turbo V8, which single-handedly makes this a lot more enjoyable to drive. The other things that it adds standard is air suspension or air springs that help control the ride, make it feel better in off-road conditions. It has the flexibility of raising and lowering itself, and it also adds the active rear steering module which can turn itself up to five degrees or add five degrees of tow. So under 36 miles an hour, it helps you get in and out of tight parking spaces. This is a bigger vehicle. However, above 36 miles an hour, the rear wheels turn the same direction as the front to, to help you get turned in. It makes it feel much smaller. 
Now, if you want to get even crazier, you can add the Sport Package, which is around $5,000. It adds these really fancy looking red painted calipers. Obviously, you have multi-piston units in the front, but the back looks like it's something you painted it with an AutoZone paint kit in the back. So it's kind of cheesy there, but the big thing you're getting is active roll stabilization and the Sport Rear Differential. So let's get into the roll stabilization first. Active roll stabilizers in the front and the rear. What it does is it adds, takes the 48 volt system with the mild hybrid setup. So it takes power from that lithium ion pack, sends it to the rear motors, which have planetary gear sets in them. So what this is able to do is essentially disengage the sway bar. It controls the left side and the right side of the sway bar. It gives the suspension more articulation. It can help in off-road scenarios. But when you're turning and cornering, it can re-enable and add a ton of force to either left or right side, which you can't do with a fixed anti-roll bar. You're basically already set up with a certain amount of preload on that bar, and it's a pure mechanical system. So this gives the vehicle more flexibility to increase anti-roll resistance. So if you're, you're diving in the front, it can activate power to the other side of the car to kind of stabilize it. And it it definitely transforms these bigger vehicles. It's almost a requirement now for sporty SUVs. So between the active roll stabilization, the air ride, and of course, the rear wheel steering, the whole concept of this is to make an SUV feel like a sports car. And we've had this argument, we talk about it endlessly. You know, why spend all that money on engineering to make something that was never designed to be a sports car, sports car. And that answer is, this is what people are buying. This is what people are buying over those $100,000 sports cars. There's a ton of margin here, but there's also a ton of engineering and technology. This has to be everything to everybody. And while it is compromised, it's amazing that it all works together. Aside from the advancements in body structure, there's far more aluminum. Looking at the front end, you see all aluminum control arms. You have a multi-link front end, which is way more difficult to tune and design in terms of kinematics, but it gives them more flexibility, again, to be more off-roady, higher performance capability. You have adaptive dampers with read ahead technology. Uh, I mean, it's just mind boggling everything that they can bake in here. I will say this feels very close to the Porsche Cayenne. The Porsche Cayenne feels a little bit better tuned. It feels more compliant over regular pavement. But again, the engineers can take the same systems and tailor it to what they want to do. But I think that's the best time to get this out on the road and talk about what it feels like to drive it. Many people ask, you know, why don't you do more sports cars or enthusiast cars? And this is really the reality of living in a state that's not, you know, 24 by 7 sunshine and mild weather. So a majority of the people in the world or in, at least in the U.S. have to deal with change of seasons. And this is a byproduct of that. So having a rear wheel drive, fun to drive car isn't always completely plausible. That's where a vehicle like the SQ8 comes in. While you trade off a lot in the summer of, in terms of overall performance, you make up for it with the fact that you have all-wheel drive, rear-wheel steering, adaptive sway bars, and of course a limited slip differential in the back that's a clutch pack style from Borg Warner and a ZF transmission that should help, hopefully get all this power put down. So let's see how this gets off the line in the snow. It's tricky, but I can tell you there's no way that I could get away with a lot of this in a traditional sports car, that's for sure. So in gravel and in salt, this does a great job with getting off the line, even with these kind of high performance all season tires. And just the way that it gives you the confidence to launch and then when you really start to get going I have traction and stability control off so I can kind of feel how the car is rotating and yes this is definitely rear biased and when you turn the wheel because of the rear wheel steering it definitely feels like it's way smaller than it is. 
brakes you have to unfortunately get into a little bit more that's where this car starts to feel its weight and you really can't just go in flat out and then just pound on them the last second you have to give yourself a little bit more space but the combination of how quickly the transmission responds of course what you'd expect from a zf the fact that there is some gear shock there's a little bit of edginess to it and the V8 sounds amazing. And they've done some tricks with the electronic motor mounts here to also kind of do what VW does with the sound actor. It has this uh, kind of vibration to it on top of the engine noise. So you wouldn't particularly think this is a twin turbo motor. It, it does have a really unique sound. There's an exhaust rumble for it, from it and it's just subtle enough not to annoy the hell out of you because really, like this when you're done driving like a dick you want a luxury car feel to it and when you're in the soft suspension setting it is remarkable how well it soaks up every single pavement in perfection it's a quiet ride it has a really good ability from switching from sport to all the way to kind of this trackish feel to it you can soften this up and make it the ultimate highway cruiser but i think you know the main thing is the engine. It's more than pretty much anybody is going to need. The, how fast this thing gets up to 100 miles an hour is shocking. It's not, Of course, it's not the fastest SUV on the market, but it's one of the best balanced in terms of combining everything that you want from performance, luxury, the interior gimmicks, the overall ride quality, handling the all weather ability of its all wheel drive system, its rear biased. I mean, there's so little to complain about with this in terms of a driving experience that I think anybody with that $108,000 or a little bit more, if you want all the packages, you're gonna love driving this. Final thoughts on the SQ8. Talked about the interior, exterior, the drivability. One thing I didn't touch on was the audio system. This has the advanced Bang & Olufsen 3D audio setup. It's way more flat and less warm sounding, but you can tweak the EQ to kind of bring some of the warmth back by raising the mids and a little bit of the sub. And if you use this as a wired connection, you're gonna be really happy with it. Bluetooth compression is pretty average overall. But the big thing to talk about is, does this replace owning a sports car? And the straight answer is, kind of. But it requires a ton of engineering, mechanical design, and electronic systems to hide the weight and the size of this. Rear wheel steering, you have a limited slip differential, active sway bars, all of the electronics that control that is nuts. And if you're keeping this for three years, you're going to absolutely love driving it. The V8 is amazing. The transmission's great. But if you're going to keep this long term, you better have a second mortgage on your house because this is going to get ridiculous to keep up with. And that it's not just Audi. It's any luxury manufacturer that's doing things to this level. So at the end of the day, it rides well. The trans performance, the, the overall performance of this is amazing. There's just inherent compromises with having a coupe SUV in terms of visibility, interior cargo or storage capacity, and all the things that we talked about. If you have $110,000 to piss away, the only thing that comes close to this in terms of drivability is some of the AMG products and the Porsche products. You're going to love operating this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.